Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. You know, no matter what's going on in your life, man, just stay prayed up. The enemy lurking, but remember God working. The enemy lurking is remember God working. That's all you need to remember. Because the enemy's going to attack you. Because what you're trying to become. Who you call upon now. And he hated. He's mad that we turned all life over to the to the Lord. And he's upset. But he can't win. He said, nobody can snatch my children out of my hands, says the Lord. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 8. I had this, I had my Bible open to this since Saturday. You know, and I just feel like God wants me to read from this. Chapter 8. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in the ways, but turned aside after Lecrae, and took bribes and perverted judgment you know the, the new testament talk about this too you know it's like sometimes it don't even matter how much you raise your kids in the abomination of the word the lord they have their own fear their own salvation to work out of you know sometimes people have been raised with no god and turned to god you know and i always look at this because it's the same thing that happened to eli too i don't understand what it's all about but it's like eli kids didn't listen <laughs> They didn't follow after God righteously. Samuel's kids either. And I try to think about them. I'm like, what's up with that? But they don't really give too much on what happened with Samuel's kids. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and to Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us kings, a king to judge like all the nations. Now look, at the same time, look how the devil working. But this thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed it to the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken to the voice of the people, and all they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Or come to all the works which they have done since the day when I that I brought them out of Egypt, even to this day, wherewith they have forsaken me. And serve other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, how about yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the works of the Lord unto the king, the people that asked of a king. That's all I got right now, people. It's a long story. But let me tell y'all something. A lot of us say we would never do that. But we turn from the Lord in so many ways that it's beyond measure. Aren't you glad that Christ died for our sins? We build up our idols in our hearts. We might not say it like they did. We're not just come straight to the preacher and be like, you know what? I'm finna, I want a king to follow after. But we do it all the time. Ready to be an evangelist on TV who we follow after and we start idolizing. Ready to be a television show. Ready to be a way of thinking that's not contrary to the, that don't line up with the Bible. Many ways we do the same thing. You know, but let's go back to the sword, what I talked about earlier. Samuel, his sons, did not do right by God. Now remember what the Bible says. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Right? I to make the tree good. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Now the same thing happened with Eli. The same exact thing. And I'm like, wow. Why is certain parts of these stories in the Bible? But you see, the people use that is an excuse to turn from God. And a lot of times 
we use that as an excuse to turn from God. Oh, the preacher ain't preaching right. Oh, but I'm guilty of that one. Especially in my early stages. But we do that. But the thing is, can you really blame the people? When you got the church leaders acting like heathen, bribes, fifth of the crane, lascivious, they doing the same thing they talked about in the New Testament. You know, and I wonder why didn't they never talk, they never showed Samuel rebuking sons or anything like that. And I'm like, what's up with that? I wonder why certain things are in the Bible though. But the same thing that happened with Eli. And Samuel happens today. We put people in office and make people turn away from God and they don't even realize it. You know, I love the idea of church if it's done correctly. I love the idea of it. But at the same time, the pastor is not my God. The deacons are not my God. The first lady ain't my God. My God is still the one that sits up high. You know, people say a saying like, you gotta take the good with the bad. But if you go to a church and it's more bad than good, what do you do then? What if you've been praying and praying and nothing happens in the church? What do you do then? Do you keep following that church? Do you keep following that pastor? You know, I've been on a process for a while trying to find a good church for my family to go to. And I've been to a few. And it's like, I don't try to see flaws, people. I don't. I try to see the good because it's a church. I try to see the good in it. So I'm still trying to find a church home. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep spreading this gospel and becoming the church myself. Can I tell you a story? This is recent. I'm still in the process trying to find my church home. I've been going to a church that my mom went to before she passed and my aunt go to now. And every time I go there, the only issue gets pushed more than God is money. Like I ain't been to the church in a while. I'll drop my wife there off for sometimes. And I'll go sometimes when I feel like I need to go. So this weekend, two weekends straight, I didn't go. I was like, man, a voice in my head said, don't go. And I'm not always trying to say this to the devil, B. Sometimes it is what it is. So, but this this week, I was like, oh, so I knew I was going when I woke up. I knew off the bat. I knew God wanted me to go. Let's put it this way. I went in a church three minutes before one of the people of the church come to me, begging. It's time for you to start paying tithes or something. I'm like, hmm. I got upset off the back because I'm like, wow. I'm not even a member here. First of all, I'm just trying to see what's going on. You know, people don't even realize so many people they come at that are children of the Most High God and they know and they see through the wickedness. Just when you get time. That's what he told me. Now, I took heed to that. Don't get me wrong. I got me a free tire envelopes and if I do start going, I may start. I don't know. Whatever God puts on my heart to do. But check that out though. And you wonder why you can't get members. <laughs> you wonder why you can't get members. It's always something. It's always something. But at the same time, I look at this church, man, it's about seven men in charge of a congregation that's probably about 14. And I already know in my heart and my soul and by the Holy Spirit that they'll take advantage of the people. And they've been doing this for years. Because I'm telling you why, this ain't the first time I've been to this church. I was a member of, this, of another church probably about two years ago. And when I was a member of that church, I went to this same church 
two years ago. And guess what? The same thing was being preached. The bills need to be paid. This need to be paid. Let me tell you something, people. The Bible says as clear as day. If a man can't run his house well, how can he run the church? Something ain't right in the church. For two years, two years, same thing, no fruit, no nothing. So I understand why people turn away. I really do. I really do understand it. But the thing is, people, you might can run away from a church, but don't you ever run away from God or let somebody run you away from God. I don't care if you leave a church. If they ain't preaching correctly, leave them. But don't ask for nobody else to rule over you. Ask for the Lord to rule over your life. You see, I don't try to see these things. I promise you I don't. I just see them. I'd have been in church with false prophets and prophesied. All kind of evil is going on. Homosexuals everywhere. And the thing is, God never sent me to one church one time. He'll send me more than one time just to see if anything has changed. Maybe that's my job description. To root up. To pull down. You understand? Because sometimes I'm like, Lord, when you going to give me the words to say? I want to say something so bad. But he's like, it's not time. Give them time. Be patient with them. They might come through. But then it comes a time when you just got to tell them what it is, what it is. Like Samuel. You know, I'm sure Samuel was very disappointed in his sons, what they were doing to the church. I bet he thought back like, wow. Eli and his sons were the same way. What did I do wrong? Sometimes it ain't even nothing about what you did wrong. Sometimes it's about your kids just doing what they want to do. You see, they said they took bribes, took all that. And I see that going on in so many churches, especially in the one that I go to now. I know people be like, I don't even think it's the pastor. That's the truth for the matter. I don't think he's the pastor. I can look at the eyes of folks. I can look at people to tell how they high and mighty, prideful. Just want to be seen. Like when I read my Bible, I read about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and I want the uppermost seats, want to be recognized for something. But it's not really about God. You know. If somebody was visiting my church, if God was to give me a church, Lord forbid, please don't, don't let me be like this. Can you get your, get your ties ready? <laughs> what? Actually, I'm coming here to get fed. That's the first thing you come to me. This guy said three words to me since I've been going to that church. And I only went probably about four times four times somebody had to put him up to it then he go right there get him I'm like wow and I wonder why I was turned to that page since Saturday you see people that's why I'm in the process God through me is in the process of building churches people people are the church if you push people away from the church oh man and they don't even see it they don't even see it I've seen my auntie stress and stress and stress over time bills behind stress stress over time I don't believe tithes is wrong. But I believe any church in the wrong hands will fall. May not happen overnight. You might let a few of them prosper. But I'm going to tell you something, people. What are those that mislead my little children? What are those? 
that you should have been still. But people don't want you to talk about stuff like that. It's the church. You can't say nothing against the church. I can say what I want to do. Say against the church. If it's against God, then what they're saying is against God. I'm just saying. Somebody come to your church and just trying to find a church home and that's what you start pushing on them. Come on now. But maybe the Lord wants me to go. It's time, Houston. You see what a lot of people don't see. You keep your eyes on the Lord. And a lot of y'all see what a lot of people don't see. And you keep your eyes on the Lord. I've been pushed out of many churches one way or the other. But one thing so far in my life, I can glorify God on this behalf that I stay true to the Bible. And I still read it and I still study it for myself. But the thing is, I tell people all the time, man, the more you study, the more your eyes open. And it's a horrible, great feeling for your eyes to be open. Don't take that in a bad way. Because you're going to start seeing things that ain't right. And then you got to learn how to do it. How to handle the problem, like the Lord says. Pray for them. Wait, be patient, be merciful. But I'm telling you, that's why a lot of people are turning away from God and to idols. You know how many people complain about the churches being extortionists and taking advantage of the people or uh, misguided churches? And we wonder why people ain't going to church no more because church ain't what it used to be. It's not the same. To me, if the man of God in the church has faith, things going to work out. Things are going to work out. Things are going to work out. Because God will put it on people's hearts to give exactly what he wants them to give. You know, I don't have people like, I put my first 10% in after every check. I understand that. I believe it's a good concept to get into. And some people are sustained like that. But what if your heart ain't right? Listen, can you buy your way into heaven? Can you tie your way into heaven? Have you read Revelations or you read anything about condemnation of going to hell? One thing you didn't see about going to hell is tithing. But so many churches are pushing these issues on tithing because you got to understand, he said, from the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're all about money, that's exactly what's going to come out your mouth. But every Sunday, I thought you were supposed to let go and give it to God, but every Sunday, Let me pause and I will continue.